Hello guys and welcome back to another CSGO video. Now today I'll be talking about the matchmaking ranking system and how the ELO might work to give you guys a better sense of what is actually happening with CSGO and how your ranks are affected. So do keep in mind this may not be correct but from my experience and from what a couple others have said online this seems to be close to what it may be. Now the problem is Valve never tell us anything so again like the kind of chance for the Dragon Lord drop we may actually never know what the real chances are and in this case we may never know how it really works but I'll be using a couple sources and try and put it simply into different sections throughout the video so do check out the timestamps below. Okay so to start with the basics there are a total of 18 skill groups within the game and if you are not in a 5 stack when you play a game then you can only play with those who are either 5 ranked above or 5 ranks below so for example if you're a solo queued MG1 then there is a chance you'll be able to play with the GN1 but never with a silver elite or lower and the same thing goes you will never be able to play with a supreme or higher. Most games though you usually see ranks 1 one or two deviations from your own so if you're MG1 this will be up to about MGE and down to about GN3. If you're in a 5 stack though you'll be able to see much higher or much lower ranks. Now this is due to the ELO system. Putting it simply if you win a game you get points and if you lose a game then you lose those points. Now these points are then used to determine your rank. So for an example an MG1 player who has a thousand ELO points will win a few games maybe go up to 1500 ELO points and then rank up to MG2. Then if this MG2 lost a few games went down to about a thousand points then he or she would derank back to MG1. Now this is why five stacks you'll be able to find much higher or lower ranks because if you're in a queue with five MG1s then your total ELO points as a team may be equal to a couple globals queued with three silver ones for example. However this is probably quite unlikely as the game will still try and search for the best fit but let's say it did happen and you lost the game then the global players on the enemy team would learn very little ELO whereas the silver players would earn a lot. Now this is because the ELO will be distributed unevenly across the team so it would suit the people who have a lesser rank than compared to those who have a higher rank. So a win would mean that the lower ranked players would earn much more and higher ranked players earn less. Now this is because it was easier for the higher ranked players anyway and much harder for the lower ranks so it kind of distributes itself well. Of course this also works with a loss so higher ranked players in a team would lose more compared to those in the lower ranks. Now one idea that I had a long time ago was that the boundaries for ranking up and deranking were separated. So what this means is that the boundaries for two ranks are at different levels. So say for MG1 it's a thousand points and for MG2 it's 1500 points. Therefore, if you've just ranked up to MG2, then at the end of the game, you can still lose three games in a row, but as long as you still have a thousand points, then you still won't derank. The same goes for the other way, so if you've just deranked to MG1 at a thousand points, then you can't just win a game straight away and rank back up because you'll need to build up those 500 points that you just lost again just to be able to rank up. However, the more supported idea though is that the ranks have a range of points associated with them. So instead of just a thousand points for being MG1, you could say it's between say 750 and 1250. Now this is kind of like the Glico system. Keeping it short, the range will move up and down depending on how many games you win just as normal, but the key difference is the longer you stay at the same rank, then the smaller this range becomes. Now this is because the longer you're there, the more the system thinks that this is the best rank for you, so it will have a more accurate answer on what your ELO points could be, and so your range decreases. So for example, say you've been stuck in MG2 for ages, then it will take a lot more wins to rank up because your range will be much smaller than a player who is just cruising through the ranks more often because their range will be much larger. As with a larger range, the game might think you're ready for the next higher rank, even though you could be equally as ready as someone with a much smaller range. So now that you've heard this, then grabbing your favorite bomb or defuse kit and getting to the top of the leaderboard with the most points and MVPs surely is the best option to rank up. Well, apparently not. In fact, Valve have apparently dispelled the claim that MVPs even have any effect. But I couldn't find a source on this, so they may still have some influence. Honestly, the best thing that you can do is try and win, and win as many rounds as you possibly can. Because there's even an idea that your rank changes at the end of each round. So that as you're playing a game, you may be eligible for deranking before you've even finished your comp. So to put this in perspective, say you were losing 15-0, then you may have already deranked, but then you take it back to 15-15, then you may have theoretically ranked back up to what you were, so then you don't lose your rank. But either way guys, I wanted to share this because even if it is proven wrong in future, then you should have a much better view at how this could work. Now you can visit this PC Gamer page that I found which explains it in very good detail. There are some things there which I haven't mentioned because I wanted to try and keep this video simpler. So definitely check that out, the link's in the description. And you can also Google the Glico 2 system, which is what CSGO is thought to be based around. But keep in mind, Valve would have heavily modified it to suit a 5 vs 5 teamwork game. So I hope you've enjoyed the video guys, and I'll see you in the next one.